Greetings there, everyone, and welcome back to the Pax Britannica mod for Hearts of Iron 4. I'm your host, Mr. Imperial Britain, level but right now. I've accidentally already completed the final stages of recovery, and then we'll talk about complete recovery. With economic reforms taking place, our economy is heading towards the final stages of recovery from the economic slump. Confidence in the British system is slowly being restored, and pre-depression economic levels are returning. We can only pray to God that it stays this way, and after much needed reforms and progress, the British economy has finally recovered from the Great Slump. Many citizens in Britain, in a while, are once again proud of our economic system, which has provided new job security and wages for the people. A luxury in the high days of the crisis. With our finances fixed, we can now focus on more pressing matters, such as the state of the empire and, of course, foreign affairs. Which is great, great, great to get all this stuff done. It is almost 1936. We still can't go down this way, but we got a lot of stuff to do here. And nothing over here yet. We get news about the military, which probably will be important to focus on. So, how about we start with the Lion's Claws and then do some colonial stuff. Britain has remained the world power for well over three centuries. Both our navy and our forces are some of the finest to ever lay grace to this world, and high command plans on keeping it that way, but... Despite our military superiority, a divide has begun to form between the young and old. Some of the British military favor more reformist doctrines, while those from the First Great War widely support more traditional and proven doctrines. And we'll start with resolving the African Authority issue. The British African Authority in West Africa is in a complete state of turmoil. Forged by a multitude of original British colonies, combining with the gaining of French and Italian colonies during the Great War nearly two decades ago, the colonies simply overstretched. Now the time's come for the local British colonial and military authorities, alongside delegations from London and the local native uh, and settler communities, to come together in conference to solve the mess known as the British African Authority. Which is great. More infantry divisions? Oh, please, and so for more, that would be wonderful. Uh, technology, we just got 35 done for heavy ships. Uh, grab some of that. I wouldn't mind making some more. So right now, uh, we are reactionaries. As much as I want to do like mobile warfare with just nothing but quadrupods, we honestly do not have enough quadrupods, first of all, and or other equipment as well. So uh, I want to do that way, but we don't have to think about it right now too much. Um, honestly, we don't have really a lot to do for decisions or political power. We have masters of the state until we have to do stuff here. We also have the Imperial Confederation. We're moderately conservative, and we can do all sorts of benefits to our, you know, puppets and allies. I think we'll wait for subsidized national industries next. National clause, of course. But some commentos, such as, Good choice for the series, Mr. Mokul ever said somebody. Maybe try and expand the empire into India, influence Arabia, and take some parts of China. We'll see what we can do. No guarantees, but we will definitely see what we can do. Thank you. More civvies? Yes, please. And we're building a lot more arms industries, too, right now, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Nothing like a mighty British military industry. Another comment was from yesterday's video. A great video. Maybe you could play Kaiser's Legion again in the Old World Blues. Win the Battle of Hoover Dam on the first try, and then play as a Malpais Luggett when Kaiser dies. Food for thought. I would love to, but that is very difficult to do. And trying to win the whole thing there with the Malpais Luggett is very, very difficult. And that's why I've not done it yet. I'd love to do that, but I just don't know how to do it. Well, at least. Uh, encryption. Good, good, good. Um, 35, 35. Th uh, 36 now, basically. Uh, grab more construction speed. Yes, please. Another comment was, Take a look at the new buildings, especially the Tesla stations. So they grant you extra factories per state that might be worth building out across all miles. Also, say a perfect conventional warfare. Just for the tea. Also, it's probably just worth helping out the Rashidis. Mind letting Lawrence of Arabia help uh, cement the position? It would be a nice thing, I think. Well... Rashidi's already done. They're doing well. Um, yeah, that'd be really cool. But yeah, I think they already got help, so... Yeah. Mm, what's next? Anything else here? Not really too much. We can do stuff here, but the line's claws. Uh, Britain's military has been unremarkable since the end of the Great War. Though we still maintain power projection, our forces have languished as something of a boutique army, once again without conscription. If we are prepared and coming for the common conflict, we need to reform our armed forces to, to a better state of readiness. Yeah, let's, uh, let's get started, shall we? The process to reform the artworks will now be kicked. Finally, into action. Cool. After that, uh, accept the barring papers versus this one. If you want to buy this one, please go right ahead, which we can't do, but we will go with this one. Accept the barring papers. If we accept this, the African Authority will be split into four primary administrative divisions. Native internal subdivisions and power structures will be maintained, but principal authority is kept in the hands of the European officials. Evan Lee Barring is a man with powerful influence on the British African Authority, the de facto protector of the international settlement colonies, and the main advocate for more conservative reform of the British African Authority. Barring, or Bearing, has put forward a proposal in his Bearing papers to carve out new colonial states from African Authority. This, however, puts forward the plan to ignore local settlers and rulers in favor of the more Anglo overlords in West Africa, which could lead to potential rebellion from the natives, however. If accepted, the African Authority was split into more stable settler colonies and mining mandates for London, a most favorable proposition. Very nice. Death charge throwers. I'd love to do that, but let's keep working on our capital ships for now. Uh, actually, we can't do any of that stuff yet, which kind of does suck. Um, well, then, I guess we'll do this one. This will be it. 
There you go. Have fun. What else do we have here? Anything else? Uh, offer of these? Sure, why not? Tesla station, someone recommended. So, Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. Research campus, Tesla towers, more local factories? Sure. Why not? We'll try three more. Because we can. 36? More coordination is a good thing. And like I said, someone did recommend uh, conventional warfare. Let's take a look. The stats of the African Authority. Conventional warfare, huh? Um, con well, conventional warfare, isn't that like Old World Blues? Superior firepower. Grand battle plans. I think a more reactionary idea would be grand battle plan, probably. That sounds like what it should be for grand battle plan. Superior firepower. Grand plans. Well, we'll see. Establish the African Authority. Established following the conclusion of the Great War, the British African Authority was uh, intended to be a provisional state to manage the affairs of the colonies we acquired in the long term. It meant to be dissolved into a series of smaller, more manageable administrations. In reality, Britain's operations across Africa began to suffer mission creep, as a lofty goal of dissolution gave way to attempting the maintaining of peace among the desperate colonies. With a potential outbreak of war in Europe on the horizon again, we've been forced to push on the dissolution path. Authority has become unwieldy and more importantly increasingly expensive in the coming months. Our officials have announced plans to bring in representatives of both the British, Italian, and French army administrations, along with the representatives from pro-British na native officials. Let's get to work then. Oh, okay, so do this one. With the talks to reform and readjustments of the British African Authority over the coming months, is it is therefore paramount to summon the local tribal rulers and other chieftains to discuss what we shall do with the colony. The British African Authority is made up of the balance of power of local treaties and alliances with British rule, and any reform which may tread on the toes of these rulers may cause the colony to burn. An outcome which no one desires, at least all London. So by inviting these local liaisons, we shall ensure the balance of power is maintained in the transition of the co colony smoothly enforced. So we're reactionaries, but we do have quadrupods, so... Oh, we definitely need some planes, but we don't have any. 20 and 20? Well, they're ready to be uh, integrated, but we have one there, which is not bad. Here, go ahead, too. We're slowly running out of fuel, but what else is new? Oh, we're almost done with that. Nice. So can we actually build more factories in there now? Five out of 11. Let's see. Okay, so 17 out of... 7 out of 17, which should be 8 out of 17. So we'll see how far we can get with that one. Um, of course, air support would be very good to get. Uh, go to that level. Go to three. Go to three. And throw on some synthetic replacements. There we go. Seven, 17. Not bad. Not bad. African liaison? Yes, please. Development. How's looking? Going up, going up. Literacy rate already there. Poverty is actually getting worse, which is quite unfortunate. I'm not sure what else we can do here, though. It's only 36, which means war might break out within the next year or so, which would not be good for us. You know, we're sort of ready. 100%, 65%, 100%, 100%. Liaison Conference begins. So the Liaison Conference of the British African uh, Authority Partition Commission has been one of the largest intra African colonies in history. Attendees have been brought from nearly every protectorate, client state, and settlement to assess the future of their authority. The two largest groups attending the conference are the Baring Commission, tactfully named it their benefactor Evelyn Baring, who wishes to see the provisional colony partition in a British dominated state. On the embers is a Big Six coalition, a group of officials hailing from the Gold Coast. Their proposal of far more radical nature would see to harness pan Africanism for the good of the Empire. We hear from the first representative. The current head of the African Authority, Evelyn ba Baring, gave a short presentation on the merits of his proposal, the Commonwealth of Carnegie. Carnegie. The most European colony would be formalized as an official constituent commonwealth. The rest of the African Authority would be partitioned into the British Maghreb Territory, British West Africa, and Nigeria. Critically, Bering argued that these territories would be administered by British officials while gradually liquidating former Latin administrators, even in spite of their extensive experience. Not particularly inspired, is he? But so the Big Six proposal would follow Bering, and presented a widely radical plan to form the West African Commonwealth. This concept, they argued, would harness pan African values within the imperial system more critically. It would be the first democratic commonwealth led, primarily by Native Africans. This proposal also entailed the creation of a two-state federative solution in Nigeria, alongside establishing Libya as a client state rather than a direct dominion. Perhaps a radical solution is what we need? Perhaps. Perhaps. What do we have over here? Oh, I guess that one's too late for that one. Uh, Bioweapons might be fun, though. Uh, how is Air Doctrine? Well, I think I found who got to choose for that one. Mr. Air Doctrine. But in the meantime, we can always grab some of that too. You might as well at this point. Um, what is this one? Well, if you're wondering about this one, liquidate the Latin administration by the Algeria Tripoli Accord. The Algeria Tripoli Accord is a proposed treaty that would see the British Maghreb territory to be split in two. Algeria would remain under British rule, while Libya would be granted to Emir Idris, who would swear a fealty to the British crown. This would allow us to consolidate our forces in a more precious colony of Algeria instead of spreading colonial forces thin across North Africa. 
Side effects is when we see a powerful emirate take over Libya, who, although will be grateful for our benevolence of granting them such a boon, could turn on at the first moment they receive, which would make the British government look quite the fool. Cool. Grab some of that because you can too. Subs would be nice, but we're okay for now. Um, if you attack, you can do a lot of damage. You do that one. Anything else for armor or auto mechs? Yes. That's what I thought. In the meantime, we do have quite a bit of army XP. Can we convert this? There's just benefits we get from doing this. And then I want to throw in another quadrupod. Actually, I want to throw in a lot more quadrupods, actually. There you go. I love this seems a lot. Um, so with that one, that's good. Oh. Um, this one. If this pattern is chosen, we'll continue to utilize the former administrators of the French and Italian colonies we now administrate. Allow us to use their experience and practical understanding of these regions to create more functional post authority autonomies. Unfortunately, the less than reliable load is individuals will have to be swept under the rug for the time being, a decision which may prove problematic in the event of a war with France or Italy. Oh, that's not good then. Alright, so we did that. So 7 out of 17. So we're going to 8 out of 18. I'm not sure what that really does then. Plus 2%. All you did was throw in one, one more in here. I'm not sure that really really worth it. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll see in the long run. We could use more manpower though. So let's get through that stuff. We could probably wait for this stuff and wait for this stuff as much as we don't want to. Dominate the skies. Perfect conventional warfare. Imperial limited arms. That looks like so much fun. Armor, attack and defense. The rifle is the future, which makes sense. Infantry. Oh, we get some artillery as well. It's not bad, but I'll keep going down this way for now. All right. Dissolve the African Authority. After much debate over a period of months, the towns finally count for the British African Authority to be dissolved into a multitude of new colonial states and protectorates. The farms of West Africa shall see the region taken in new heights of prosperity and stability under the British crown for years to come. A new chapter in the history of colonial Africa has begun for the better or for worse. Pretty much. Allen Brook. Nothing there. Okay. More cities? Yes, please. How are we doing for the industry? You could use more rubber. There go two more. More civvies, please. There you go. Even more civvies, please. And then we'll raise our construction level as well. Yeah. Mm, active sonar, more infantry attack, defense, and artillery. It really does make it sound like we should pretty much should go with Grand Battle Plan. Now, I apologize if you don't want us to go down that route, but it seems like that's the way... With being reactionary and stuff like that, superior firepower is not bad, but I don't know. We're not really doing speed or mass assault, so let's go with Grand Battle Plan. Apologize once again if we're not going to the route you want us to go, but it is what it is. Uh... Real Britannia has an independent. Oh, we don't have a military government, so. The King's Agenda. Which must be a third way we can go as well, I guess. I guess with MPP, or fourth way, maybe. That'd be cool. I'm not sure how to get that, but that'd be cool. Oh, uh, perfecting conventional warfare, as someone did say. Um, the bulk of our armed forces is infantry based. Is infantry based. And this is true for most, if not all, of the other armed forces of the globe. Despite the younger members of the High Command demanding innovation, they've forgotten that those who served during the Great War know best. Definitely, we probably want some radar down here too. Even more radar, just in case. You never know when the war's gonna break out and stuff like that. So, gonna happen. So, it's fine. We're almost done with our land. Our land. Naval production. Agroponics would be nice, but we gotta raise conscription level. We're in partial position already. We'll only will die. Like normal. Just in case, let's bring you guys back home. Second Division of Africa. <clears throat> Following the liaison conference, Africa has been divided once again for the whims of the London government. The final end of the African authority has brought, will bring the close to one of the last reminders of pre-war Africa, and hopefully see the continent brought to a period of new peace and stability. A toast to a job well done. Cool. Okay, so British West Africa. Herbert Stanley. 
Dominion of Nigeria, Sir Shenton Thomas, the Maghreb Territory, led by Alexander Cambridge, and then Tunisia, of course, up there. Not bad. International African Settlements. Alright, well, that's cool. Commonwealth of Carnegie. Carnegie, okay. United Kingdoms of Germany. East African Administration. Quadrupods, very nice. Oh, Sir John Pershing. Yep, all right. All right, what do we do here? Uh, it's way too ahead of time now. Fuel. Daily command power gain, naval doctrine. So working on that. Yeah. Limited conscription, please. Up next. Post-war pacifism. Uh, army experience gain, command power increase. Uh, we'll get a research slot if you keep going this, this way, which might be the best thing to do right now, since we're done with all this. Elections haven't happened yet. We're done with this. Can't do this. We'll keep doing this way. Good, we really wanted to. Pound sterling zone. Well, let's keep going with more military stuff for now. Um, that's not bad. Rifle of the future. A soldier is useless without his rifle effectively no better than a citizen with a stick. But I maintain a global agenda. Then we must at least develop the equipment our soldiers use on a daily basis. Pretty much, man. Pretty much. Perfecting conventional warfare. And we're done with our naval auction. Even with the, the debuff to how much we get every day. Increase the Oh, oh. Oh boy. Noticeable poverty? That is not bueno. I want to get race down there as fast as possible. Ease. Endless firepower sounds like fun. Even though I guess superior firepower would make more sense, but we're actionaries as well. Artillery shall serve an important role in our armed forces, all second only to our infantry. With enough darn artillery, the enemy will crumble in fear as the shells come crashing down around him. Actually, what does this template look like? It's definitely okay. It's not great. Um, ledger. Anti-air is not good enough to throw on there, even though it's very good to throw on there. Support equipment is not great either. We need way more planes. We need more millies, civvies. We're going to need a lot more of everything, pretty much. Um, anything down here yet? Nope. Imperial Confederation. Strongly conservative. Well, we need our own political power. More fuel just in case. Ship wise, what do we got here? Not a bad amount. Slowly getting more planes. Good. Some slight coverage. Subsidies of farmers. Excavation's good. And this firepower, of course. Britannia rules the lands. Just like years before and during the Great War, Britain shall always host a professional discipline armed forces, capable of subduing any foe, large or otherwise. Should we go ahead and master the earth where we want to get to next? Oh, wait, we cross all the falling. God dang it. Well, we can do that. Wow. Remove over confident general staff. Well, whatever. Nothing we can do about that right now. Alright. And it's almost 1937, where France is going to probably attack Valonia. In the meantime, do we have any extra planes? Yes, that would be good. Fighters, yes. Bombers, yes. We're going to need some naval bombers, too, of course. Uh, subsidized national subsidy stuff. That'd be fine. Is that all the manpower we get? Holy crap, that's not good. There goes those guys. Fine, whatever. Tejas, yes. The coalition forms. It's fine. No one cares about them. Advanced machine tools. Happy 1937, everybody. Grab more research speed and also grab some of this. Coordination is very good to grab. Alright, so after that, then what? Dominate the skies. I like that one. Battlefield support, though. Battlefield support is the way we want to go, though. Hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, you get more casts. We have actually heavy fighter reliability. Actually, supporter boys on the ground. Scout planes reliability. Um, uh, even though we can't get the bonus for it, I mean, it makes more sense for get more agility and carrier stuff here. Dominate the skies. Air superiority remains a do dominant air doctrine for RAF. I have no intention of changing it. While some may argue that we should focus on the cast fighters to better assist our boys on the ground, but these Larkins have forgotten that without any aerial domination, there is no place for cast. Very true. Oh, 1937 general elections. Following the chaos of 33, yet another election is rolled out. The three major parties of the UK have come forward to make the claims of parliamentary material once again. Yeah, I mean, might as well keep going the same way, so. Britain's vote of the Nationalist People's Party in 1937 election. War with war on the horizon, the socialist menace abroad, the British public have decided to put us nationalists, nationalists to guard and defend their nation. Uh, their home in the British Empire. With this public support, we'll make sure that the Pax Britannica shall last another 300 years. Britain lives and marches on. Good, good, good. Dominate the skies, and then we'll do this. Target the anti-socialists. Or anti-socials. Rifle pattern. It's good. Not bad. Uh, Defenders of Western Civilization? It's not bad. A democratic mandate. Put the black shirts to use. An organic national state. Ooh. Anglo Saxon unity. That sounds awesome. Oh, is it war with the. Okay, so. Invoke National Security Act. Unshackle the black shirts. It's not bad. The Cult of the Iron Lady? It happened here. Oh boy. I kind of want to see what this one's like. anglo saxon unity sounds awesome. I like both of these. Unshackle them. After that, you might be able to get all the way to this side here, too. Maybe. Military government? It happened here. Planet economy. National Security Act. Uh, I guess defenders of Western civilization. Britain is the guardian of all things civilized. She is the one who brought clothes to the savages of Africa when they had none. She was the one who ended the bickering of the European powers through her victory at the Great War. Therefore, we are the defenders of Western civilization, a mantle which we shall promote to the British people to remember what we are fighting for and encourage them that sometimes war may be necessary. As it is necessary sometimes. Arms factories keep working on them. Rare metals, we need more rare metals. 36 heavy ships. I got more than enough naval XP now. Rock control 1, radar th uh, doo -doo -doo. Secondary batteries are okay. Um, aircraft 2, anti air, and secondary battery 2. There you go. There you go. Try that. So we need way more arms factories, though. Try that. You have more soft attack in general. Oh, actually, you guys go here. Everyone do that. Another carrier? Good, throw him over here now. That's really good, actually. Oh, any upgrades? Yeah, you're going to be Seawolf anyway. I like this one because you just chuck torpedoes at him like crazy. So, and I want this one too to hit him as much as possible. As much as I like Lancer for penetration, just chucking more, I think, is just more fun. So, I'll. Another comment from yesterday also says, The weirdest part of this timeline is that the North has an oath to the Tories. Huh. Someone else says, God save the king. Pretty much. Pretty much. Oh, well, since we're here anyway, as the defenders of Western civilization, let's go and do move to control the unions. Probably begin to worsen a little bit. That's alright with us. The British unions are a powerful entity which were founded to defend the working class man. A noble certain point, but the socialists have drafted the British unions into a festering abomination of revolutionary thoughts and anti-British agenda. To mend this, we shall move to control the unions by unifying some and replacing others to create unions who are loyal to us and therefore Britain as a whole. Target the anti-socials. Uh, we live in a society. Therefore, it's expected that every English man shall do his duty and contribute to said society for the greater good to keep Britannia the most cultural and patriotic nations in the world. However, they are a bunch of Muppets on the land who refuse such a sacred calling from pacifists to teenagers. To do this, we shall target these anti-socials to fall in line with any means necessary. Good. Very good. Oh. Progressive Tories no longer support us. I want more support from the Tories. Uh... Oh, one of the following must be true. Progressive Tories. 
We do that one. This person just a little bit more. France walks into rest. We're about to go to war. Just about to go to war. If that's okay, let's go and stop training these guys. Forty percent, sixty-five percent, the seventy-five percent. Wigs are neutral. Towards will support us more. Look at that one too. So we can get both of these done as well. Good. I'm not sure which way we really want to go with this stuff, but we'll see in just a little bit. Air stuff, yeah, get some better fighters. We get some fighters, at the very least. Um, air definitely would not be bad. What is this? Strength and muscle and jungle work. Roll. Uh, with the acquisition of French colonies of Indochina after a triumph in the Great War, a new outpost of the empire was born. However, Vietnam was an inhospitable land. The jungles are created to hamper our attempts at colonial rule, and local populace seem to be on the verge of rebellion. And only through our unlearned lesson in Malaya will we be able to hold on to this new outpost for the empire. All right, so that's not bad so far. Uh, do one up there too, as well as get even more synthetic refiners, because we are not going to be able to build very much once the war actually starts. We're full on fuel, which is nice, but we do need more trucks, and we'll need a lot of fuel, let's be real. 100%, 65, 100%. They're neutral towards us? Oh, they should not be neutral, they should accept us for who we are. Artillery? Yes, please. Mach competing machine? Yes, please. Decryption? Very good. Polonia still exists for now. They support us, support, 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 which is good, 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 good. Strongly conservative, and we don't care about anything around here. Increase in poverty. Widespread poverty, well, awesome, good. Military survival kits, thank you. Nice, that's good. Also down there as well. Um, there you go. Doing away with the social rot. The returning their office, Prime Minister Orman has continued her plans for the NPB's doctrine in 1937. Uh, with the Mental Hygiene Act and the National Security Act, she has seen uh, the chance to begin pushing the party ideology even further. With while the Workers' Union Party remains irrelevant, there are many more social diseases that can be dealt with. Acting under the purview of the Mental Hygiene Act, Prime Minister Orman set out a new series of guidelines effectively making social thought a mental illness. Under this designation, hundreds of the major socialist figures across the nation are marked for arrest, internment, and compulsory sterilization. Oh, yes. Further expansions of the law have placed legal restrictions on homosexuality, as well as expanding restrictions on miscegenation. Now there's, now there's one in the spot. Don't, he don't look right to me. Cool. Reinforce the Pearl River. Uh, proposed pound sterling. If you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. Proposed pound sterling zone. The pound sterling is the greatest currency on this earth, and is used as an international currency all over the world. It's therefore new natural for the Britain or the British to you, to will the Imperial Federation to use its own imperial currency. The pound sterling in all lands controlled by the Federation. This shall see more power handed over to London, and a new bank of empire to control the new zone, which will allow for easier flow of trade under oversight, was also allowing London to control the Dominion's trade more easily. A great opportunity for England to cement herself as the financial hub of the empire. Pretty much. More organization defense is A-OK -okay with us. Uh, subsidize. More subsidies. Yes, please. Get, get some more civvies. I'll start building up a lot more infrastructure, too. Get refineries, radar, civilian factories, arms factories. What's not to love? We could use more quadrupods, though. Uh, cast is not enough. Do we have naval bombers? We actually might not. We need to get some more naval bombers and whatnot. Nice. Oh, it actually went to war with them, huh? Home well, rule for the West Indies. If you want to do that, please go ahead. Do, 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 do. Calcutta administration, huh? Well, partition the West Indies. Probably. Probably do that one. Probably. Yeah, we are. Logistics, armored trains, you can do that one, why not? MREs, improved artillery. Ah, 
Now the home Indies are an extremely important and strategic objective for both us and the American Commonwealth. The West Indies can be used to dominate trade heading into Latin America, and the northern tip of South America will also possibly be used as a staging point to threaten the American Commonwealth's interests in the region. To solve this issue, we shall simply split the West Indies amongst us and the Americans with us keeping half and the Americans getting the other half. Simple. Ah, there was Valonia. You guys can have those guys. Um, over here, keep training those guys. They march over there, which they'll take them out extremely fast. Extremely, extremely, extremely fast. And over here, great, great war fighters, good. You guys repair pretty quick, I don't have to worry about that too much. Even if we try to help them out, they would die so fast anyways. It doesn't even matter. There's Polonia, it falls, and now we can see what next up. Yes. Not bad. Intel, you know, we could probably start doing that too. Imperial Intelligence Service, we don't even have anything here yet. Kinda sucks. Oh, look at that. King of course, go. they're still alive. They refuse. They refuse a proposal. Terrible. Okay, then, whatever. Um, a joint confederal canal zone. If you're about that, please go ahead. Boom, 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 boom. But, so British control the canal zone. The Nicaragua Canal is by far one of the most important assets in the Empire along the British fleet and the Federation's commerce to quickly transverse the Atlantic to the Pacific. It is therefore by right and the, for the good of the Federation that London is to keep sole ownership of the canal to prevent any mishaps from occurring or for the canal to be followed by the sheer power of the Royal Navy guarding it. Although sole ownership may upset some in the Federation, it's required for the good of the Empire. Always oh, for the good of the Empire. Ah! I love these things. Because it's for the good of the Empire. Exactly. Oh, yes. Ooh, Naval Command. Well, don't really need that. Global Presence. Research speed is not bad. Research speed. Heavy ship design costs could be very good. But I love repair speed. Because you can get them out faster. Experience gain. Design costs. It's 37. Light ships. Uh... Right over here. Nighttime attacking and spotting. Visibility goes down. Plus combat. We have a lot of heavy capital ships. Decisive battle. Uh, chest crit hit, critical hit. 15% is not bad. Positioning is not bad either. I like that too. 10% is not bad for nighttime. Communication, communication, communication. Brave commanders. Crit hits. You know, I want effective communication, but brave commanders. I kind of like that. Full speed ahead. Screw it. Full speed ahead. Uh, for this one, starting level commanders. No. Uh, more defense. Installed aggression. Let's be aggressive. I'll be really aggressive. Fighter 2s are good. Cruiser design costs. I'm going to research them anyways. We're going to get a lot of heavy heavy cruiser research speed, but heavy ship design costs. Uh, battleship research speed. That's going to affect everyone else. Refit yards. Ah, uh, we have global presence already. We should probably do that one. I keep throwing guys on that one, but like, we need more than just that. Who actually we have garrisons down here, don't we? Yeah. Don't forget about that one or the canal zone here. Corsica Falls. Of course. Uh, what else is next? Offer subsidies because you can. And that one too. Be good. Thing over here. It's thirty. It's already thirty-eight. Holy crap! All right, four days left for improved artillery. Nice. More artillery? Yes, please. Alexander. Um, and also, you're probably going to have to navigate from Portsmouth. Down here, probably. Cherbourg. Cherbourg. And then these guys will follow up, too, after, that, after they're done. Construction. How are we doing? More arms factories? Okay. Okay. 
Naval command, doesn't really matter. Cavalry ship attack and defense. What was it? Speed? What was that one? Pursue further centralization. Steady as she goes. Oh, it has to be neutral for this one. Oh, well, whatever. Reform the Articles of Confederation. Well, whatever. Our trains are not bad. We'll go and grab some more engineers for now. Increase in poverty. Oh, no. Well, why does it keep increasing? We're not making it any worse right now, are we? I don't think we are. Ooh, armored trains. Let's make all our trains armored. Where are the trains? Trains. There they are. Any more planes? Yes, quite a few. Actually, do this. Do as much as you can for now. Alright. For that one, found the carrier fleet. Reinforce the capital fleet. Well, this is this one. Support the Calcutta administration. East India. Oh, crap. It was the last bastion of British rule in the subcontinent. She has a massive boon to her empire. Her taxable population lays in ruins, or lays in the tens of millions, and the region's resources provide many luxuries for the empire. Is it no surprise that the local Indian princes set their eyes upon the lands in the east? It's going to stand, therefore we shall send reinforcements and capital to Churchill's government to make sure that he holds East India for us. Dutch crisis escalates. Makes sense to me, man. Oh, boy. The Second Great War. All heck is let loose. Very cool. Anything else? Not really. It's fine. Industry wise, we can lower. Need more planes. Um, actually, let's actually get it for now. Germany asks to buy a Shanti. Can you do this? It actually wouldn't be too bad, giving us more anti air. Uh, can we do that one too? Can we do anti landship stuff? Not quite. The UK of Germany have come forward with us with the offer of purchasing our, their own crown colony, our crown colony of Ashanti. It appears that Germans intend to strengthen the colonial position in West Africa and want a connection to canal, the colonies. They're offering a very high sum of money for the, for the purchase of the colony and assure us that there's no other move to weaken the British global power. The government's conflicted about this proposal. For some, it is inconceivable that even an inch of the empire should be given up, whilst other parties consider the offer to be quite attractive, especially looking at the current economic situation. The sale of a small colony might help the economy and people of the British world, but are we not the empire in which the sun ever sets? A few new pounds? Well, not uh, decline size. Sorry, but this is reactionaries. As much as I understand why they would want a shanti, no. Operation Plantagenet. With well, France on the warpath path again, it's their duty attempt to keep the peace in Europe. Let on the tent for too long, France may subjugate the Germans and establish themselves as the preeminent continental power and become an existential threat to our interests. We must intervene to not just save ourselves, but the whole of Europe from the day of the jackboot. Oh, they're doing. Okay, I should get some already. Holy crap, yeah. Oh, actually, maybe not. Are they doing... How, how are they doing? Maybe I'll say... Oh, look at those Luxembourg. Carrier fighters. Oh, let's get some more bombing as well. Well. Yeah, Germany's going to definitely die. They don't do the tightening news. The British mandate. Uh, foreign affairs cannot believe his ears when talking to his German colleague. The French and Russians have shaken hands upon a military alliance, yet the Germans are far too calm about the whole affair. Not to be rude to you, but you are fully aware of the implications, the British minister asked, hinting to slight annoyance in his voice. The calm figure of the German minister did not help at all, and he sheepishly replied, I am, without any further elaboration. The British ministry is currently looking through a variety of possibilities in the near future, trying to listen to the advice that the German ministry has given according to the perspective on the situation, but not a single analysis ended it up without at least the advice of mobilizing a part of the military. Tapping the papers on the table, the British minister's swift rattling of facts did not seem to impress the German minister. Again, the German minister calmly answered, The German Empire simply doesn't share the over-pessimistic and perhaps even militaristic view of the British Empire. That seems to me the biggest obstacle at the moment. Perhaps it's the eternal siege mentality of the bureaucrats you employ or the German 
experience, experience on the continent, but we're more worried about the potential problems this may cause for the market operations in Russia, France, and the rest of Europe than continental peace somehow uh, being threatened. If he could, the British minister would have snapped, but diplomacy had to prevail, even if the Hun lost his eyesight. We'll report the German perspective to our government, then. Holy crap. How are you not freaking out? Now we are in a state of war. Oh, we're out of motorized. Yeah, that makes sense. Alright, by the again. Convoys, you say? Alright. Sally forth. And see what we can do. Yeah, the Germans are losing. Not extremely fast, but they're they're definitely losing. Yeah, how are they not oh my goodness. I mean they're fighting a two front war, I guess, but they don't even have Schleswig Holstein either. Italy will do okay. Got this fine, yeah. Come on in. Wow. My convoys. Ooh, look at this, look at this. Ooh boy. Uh, lots of heavy cruiser. Oh, sink it. Oh, I'm getting... Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's so nice. Oh. So, let's see. We lost a destroyer and a CV naval bomber. We sunk the part of the fleet. Two battleships, two battle cruisers, a heavy cruiser, and some other smaller ships. Oh, so beautiful. We have cut them off successfully so far. Good. Beautiful. Yes. Well, you guys do the same thing. Get ready to go as well. Uh, industry. Construct. Uh, Morning records, maybe? Where are those? Very nice. I'll bring forth some first for now, that's fine. Ooh, my convoy sounds good. Can't go do that one yet. In here. Lost two convoys, which sucks. Lenin Committee proposal. Ah, oh, no, it is in these bleak hours that we must stand united and ready. Spoke the British Minister of Foreign Affairs, trying to appeal to our nation today. Already the situation in Europe has seemed quite desperate. France and Russia were already quite making the maneuvers on the German soul, and if they had their way, then Britain would surely be next. Britain seemed both desperate and sincere about the threat of the Franco-Russian alliance posing to the globe, but the question is, would we be any better than the British? What? Let's snap the idea out here. Let's put the idea out here. League of Nations? Alright, we'll see. Kind of about to get absolutely destroyed by us, which is great to see. Sixteen thousand, sixteen thousand, not bad, not bad. That you're falling very quickly. Wow. Ten days left, not bad. Uh, development is probably still getting worse. Not good for us. Quadrupods, it's all good right here. Could use more, just more of everything, really. Hmm. Air experience gain. You know what? I never really choose, chose this one. Let's do that one. All right. Formalization of the League of Nations. The League of Nations has been formally established with the provisional seat of the organization in London. The Anglo German Alliance is now full of international alliance, granting great legitimacy. We'll not make the same mistakes again. Nice. Unify the Indian protectorates. That'd be kind of cool. You know what? I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys decide. Should we do invoke the National Security Act versus a democratic mandate? Let me know which one we should do. Because that was Anglo-Saxon unity, an organic state, national state, versus it happened here, and invoke it, of course. So let me know which one we should do. Democratic or invoke the national security state. I will let you all decide. 
Um, up next, I'll see what this one does. If you're wondering about an Indian Commonwealth, please go ahead about unify the Indian protectorates. East Indian Tamil are already precious jewels in the Imperial Federation. It's therefore no surprise that some in the Federation are demanding unification of the British governments and the subcontinent, and the more hawkish amongst us are demanding for a, a British unification of the subcontinent, subcontinent once more. By forming a British Raj, which will add the Crown Jewel in our Imperial Federation while also avenging our defeat nearly a century ago against the Indian rebellions. That would be bad. Let's move on. We can go total mobilization, but we're okay. We don't need to do that, go that far yet. Approach Hawaii. Uh, approach Hawaii. The islands of Hawaii are a strategic location bridging the Orient to the Americas. Therefore, in an interest, we shall begin to negotiate the Hawaiian elite to join our sphere of influence in return for protection again to gain the basis of Hawaii for Imperial Armada. Beautiful. Skill level three ain't bad. Ain't bad, too bad at all. Go in as well if you can now, too. What did Nibley invade us? What is going on? Ah, the quadrupods made it. Beautiful. Come on, hurry up, take him out, and boomerinos. With you, I'll put you under someone else. But now I'm a gut for now. It's good at being entrenched or not, so. Other than that. I want you all to do this. And move quickly. Bad. Not bad at all. Oh, we're out of fuel, though. Well, that's not good. That's actually probably the worst thing. To be out of fuel. Mm. There you go. More refineries? That's what I thought. Wow. Just tons of convoys. So far, not bad. Uh, some of you guys looking really bad here, though. Why, why are you so bad right now, though? You're not forcing an attack or anything. I know we a lot of those guys, but still. Fall of Paris, how terrible. What do you mean, terrible? What? No, we're doing okay as is already. Yeah, they want to help us out, that's fine with us too. Until the Manchester Conference, the Manchester Conference in London, uh, has begun with presentations and proposals from attending all League members. The League has formalized plans for the post-war division of Europe and Asia. Once achieved, this will hopefully prevent further conflicts. A roadmap for peace in our time. Cool. Book the Port Anglo Portuguese Alliance. Um, I don't want to do that one yet. We're not really ready for that one yet, so. Maybe mm, exports. Maybe that guy. Losses. 104,000. That's a lot already. 85, National State of France. That's not bad. Lille. Not bad. Don't finish out what we do we've been doing for now. Well we'll stop, take a break too. Just hold. Just hold for now. It's fine. Everyone will consolidate. I kinda know how map already probably works, so. The French have lost a ton of territory so far, and some of them are really taking some really bad supply issues. Or have some really bad supply issues right now. Gets more max planning to. Establishing the British Indian Empire. The British administration in Bengal and Burma under Lord Winston Churchill's long dream of uniting the Indian subcontinent under the Union Jack. But to first achieve such a far off dream, the state must further be united and individual if it plans on conquering the entirety of India. Plans have been drafted to reform the Dominion into a federation, but individuals critical of such an idea have instead put forth a counter proposal, one that would see the administration instead become a unitary state. Conventional 
colonial administration, a federation between the colonies. That'd be cool. Dominions of India. That'd be really cool. Stop second breakthrough would be great. Are they actually attacking us? Huh. Still attacking us, eh? Wow, 26 convoys sunk. Oh, that's pretty darn neat. Alan Brook, well planned attack. Eh, that's not enough. Oh, that sucks. That sucks. Any upgrades, sir? That's what I like to see. Engineers, nice. Better recon might work very well as well. Augments, eh, don't really need to worry about that too much right now. Uh, nav stuff, cast stuff, you know, all that good stuff. Yes, please. The French are still slowly pushing in. I don't understand. When I played as Germany, it wasn't too bad, I thought. Ooh, how did they get over there, too? For guys, sure, why not? More artillery? Oh, yes, please. Time, do some of that too. Sure, why not? Convoys go bye bye. Bye bye, convoys. Enemy convoys at the very least. So, all this is done. If we can help out poverty, that'd be great, but whatever. Uh, Limit exports. No, nope, can't do that one. Close economy, not quite. Convoys. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that one at the bottom. Let's take a look here. Oh, they're out of manpower. So, any damage you do, they cannot recover from. And they're out of anti tank almost. Artillery. They're out of artillery as well. I'd say we're in quite a good position. Uh, what to do with Formosa? Formosa was seized from the Japanese after the Great War and lay as a glorified naval base for Oriental Fleet. Many colonies either gave away the poor region either back to the Chinese or Japanese, while some are calling for to be forced into a new proper colony for federal federation. So, the Formosa question, we shall put the question to London as to see, be able to see what will be done about the island. Reinforce the Pearl River? Hong Kong. It's the Pearl River. Or is our Oriental Jews? Oriental Jewels. The city is a gateway to our interest in China. It's one of the largest financial sectors of the Federation. It is therefore important, a paramount, the paramount that we defend the Crown Colony from any Chinese attempt to illegally occupy Hong Kong. We shall invest in the defense around the city to make sure that we can hold Hong Kong and possibly use it for a potential invasion in China. Why not? That's fine. They're still attacking us, huh? Well, time to push and end this war. Lille would be very nice this time of year. Oh, they can't quite pierce us. I thought they would be able to increase it. Oh, come on. Overwhelming poverty. Hey, look, Dunkirk is ours. Yeah, they're still advancing into the French into the German lands. How? It just baffles me how they're able to do that. Um, of course, we do have a lot of planes here and a lot of air superiority. Oh, a lot of damage. Love it. Nice. Ah, defeated the National City of France and our allies. Beautiful, but we're not done yet. We must have got more here. Oh, quite a bit more of a lot of stuff, but not everything yet. Oh, we still have the Spanish to deal with. Streamlines, streamlines, thing of a bobs, industry. Not bad. Future of Europe, the French problem. The greatest rival France has been defeated and her corpse has been laid out for all to bear witness to. 
Despite the many celebrating France's defeat, the task to administer in these occupied regions is an issue the British government must tackle. Already many suggesting border changes and whether new sovereign states should be created. The redrawing, uh, redrawing of France has not begun. Pre-war borders? Partially dismantled. Francia de Lenda asks. You know what? I'll leave it up to you. Which way should we do? Pre-war borders? Partially dismantled? Or uh, this last one? But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we'll pretty much probably end this campaign and restore the League of Nations power over the rest of the world. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.